Oh, welcome to another Richard Head Longbows video. Here I am in the wood store. Uh, thought I'd have a look around, see what we've got left uh, with regards to various types of materials. Tell you what we've what we've got here. Uh, starting off at the back, we've got some U billets, short lengths of U. Uh, most of it is Oregon U. The best of it has actually been used now, but there's still some bows in amongst this, I'm sure. Uh, that's been cut down into a pair of billets, very, very close grain, quite nice uh, sap wood. Not too big, so that'll make a, a nice light ladies bow. Underneath, lemon wood. We've still got quite a lot of planks of lemon wood, uh, which we've had for some time now. Uh, moving on, we've got snake wood. Very heavy wood. Tremendously heavy, very, very dense uh, and very expensive. We seem to have three uh, half logs of it. This doesn't have too much of that figuring in it, that sort of snake skin appearance, but it's still the same material and makes a very, very good bow. Uh, what else have we got? Some more U. These were pieces we got from Earl Ulrich in America and he was one of the old time bowyers and collectors of wood. Uh, he considered wood to be a gift from God. I think he's a, a quite a religious chap uh, and he very carefully cut it, went into the mountains, up into the Cascade Mountains and in the winter, which is the best time to cut the wood, and cut it and selected it. Very, very good quality. We bought what was left of his stock when he died. Um, someone thought they'd already got his uh, materials, but he never threw anything away. And they found at the back of his wood store a lot of you. So we bought it. Uh, this is just what's left now. Originally, this would have been a very good piece. Unfortunately, over the years, it had some wood worm in it. They seem to like the sap wood, but they don't like the heartwood. So I can cut this down, plane off the sap wood, back it, because it's a short billet, have to join it in the handle, but it will make a very, very good backed bows. Uh, the grain on some of this is so tight you can hardly see the grain. And he used to write things on it. Um, this was obviously selected for Mr. Miller, and it looks like it's 1977. I've had pieces that were dated 1946, which is in fact the year I was born. Um, he, d he dated everything. He was very, very careful with looking after the materials. So that's some we got from him. Uh, various other bits here. That's uh, some English U, I think. I'm probably going to back, back that. I've planed one down already. So there's quite a few bits of wood there. Underneath, more lemon wood and some ebony probably bought so we can make footing arrow footings out of it uh, but lemon wood quite a lot of lemon wood uh, some more lemon wood there short billets which need to be jointed in the handle uh, hiding behind that is a piece of osage orange again very very dense and when that's first cut it's like that a yellow color but as it ages, it darkens, and there's a piece here that's gone almost black. I and mean, that's very old, and it goes to this really nice chocolate colour. Um, again, I think the worm got into the sap, but you don't use the sap on Osage. And like you, you remove the sap wood completely. Uh, so there will be a bow in there, a really powerful bow, I should think. Uh, that's some more of Earl, Ulrich's U. Uh, that's got a date on it, I think 1960 something. And he's written the word joint there. So he's obviously intending to joint this. Again, very close grain. Uh, a nice piece of wood. Uh, so there's still some good, good pieces here, which is great. Uh, let's go back the other side. Um, obviously Osage that we described. 
some more pieces of Osage there which will either make bellies or perhaps uh, center laminates um, purple heart piece of purple heart there these are pieces of what you'd think was lemon wood but in fact it is digame it's digame which was the best material we believe it came from Cuba um, it, you probably would not be able to get something called digame now it's generally called lemon wood but this was the original stuff and it really is very dense uh, these pieces along with some full-length six-foot pieces we got from uh, the factory of FH Airs uh, when they closed a factory in London and we got hundreds of uh, staves four six-foot staves plus a lot of these which can be jointed and should make very good bows I say it's very very dense material and uh, we saved it really it could have ended up on the bonfire and we think some squatters got into the factory and had, actually did burn some of it to keep them warm uh, what else have we got um bamboo backing bows now if you need to back it a lot of people are now using bamboo which you can either buy in large full round sections or to make it easier unless you have got a decent bandsaw you can now buy them in strips like that so we then just plane the inside down and back a bow with that which makes a very good backing prior to that and some people still use hickory uh, we found it very difficult to get hold of good quality hickory that didn't have the grain lifting and all sorts of things people are still using hickory we'd still be using it if we could get decent stuff um whoever's using it at the moment bowyers presumably can get decent materials but we found it very difficult and gave up in the end again very very heavy wood excellent stuff uh what do we got here pakia uh yellow colored very dense wood we usually use it for the center laminate of a bow seems to work really well so you've got uh, this uh, pakia which was called lemon heart which is a bit like um, green heart and purple heart uh, green heart I thought I had some somewhere oh that's green heart again very very heavy very dense wood and they use that in lock gates and the materials we've got and we've got quite a lot of um, about inch and a half square pieces uh, came from some lock gates that were destined for the North Sea and it was material they bought too much material I think and we got hold of it and took it along to uh, a um, timber merchants uh, who had a, a big bandsaw they were cutting up wood and we said oh can you cut this up and it was so hard it ruined their bandsaw blade so we had to buy them a new, new saw blade very very tough stuff I don't think they realized what they were what they were letting themselves in for but it makes a good bow again very very dense material difficult to work uh, oh, some more you there that's um, got a bit of a, a knot in the edge but that should disappear um, so you've got now you've got a full length stave now no jointing in the handle obviously and you've got some quite nice sapwood a little bit on the thick side but to live with that and some nice heartwood and we'll remove the back and uh, work on that but that would make a nice a nice bow i think that's probably about all we've got here at the moment uh, there's another couple of bits there which I don't even know what that is but, um, and I don't even know if it will make a bow but who knows might do yeah I think that's about it that's a piece another piece of you that actually came from Switzerland again growing high up in the mountains 
very close grain and we've made some nice bows out of that. There's only a couple of bits we've got left now. So I think that's uh, that's about about it. Hope uh, that's been of interest to someone. And uh, some of it we will be using. Some of it we'll be, we will be selling on. We can't we can't use it all now. Um, so probably some of this degarme might go. Uh, some of the shorter lengths of lemon wood, we might move some of that on to people. Um, but uh, it's uh, all good stuff. The next video we will do, we will do on selecting materials, particularly you, where you've got to find a piece that doesn't have too many flaws in it. We might describe the flaws you're likely to find and how you'll get over, overcome them. Uh, we will do that. Might even look at um, some lemon wood, the sort of things you're looking for, straightness of grain, um, no splits in it, and also the lemon wood. We found if you go and buy it direct from the importers, which is great, you can select it, but you need to put it away for a couple of years to season. If you start off um, with it fresh, you will have all sorts of problems. Uh, so we'll describe that sort of thing in the next video.